Thank you for sharing, Bert. Um, I am here with Common Purpose because of a trip that I took to Florida. Um, while I was still working with the marketing agency that I was with, uh, I took a trip with Charles, David, uh, Bert was there as well. That's where I first met you and the Florida team. And that was my introduction to CP um, along with uh, the work, they did a few other um, workshops for millennials. It was kind of the first time experimenting what bringing millennials into the CP community would look like. So after this trip to Florida, um, I realized that even though there was no one there that looked like me, there weren't a lot of young people or uh, black people, pe people of color, uh, there, I was still able to have a good time and bond with the people that I was on the trip with because uh, we all had this common purpose. We had a reason, uh, a common reason to be there and we loved the work that we were doing and we, we saw the importance of that work. And so I made lifelong connections and it was really a life-changing trip. Um, just seeing the power that uh, we could bring from Seattle uh, to two communities that really needed it, needed the, the support, the energy morale boost that we brought. Um, because, you know, a lot of a lot of these organizations or communities are low staffed or under resourced. And so when we brought 40 people, I saw the huge difference that we were able to make in those communities uh, only within a week. So after that experience, um, I was hooked and I wanted to be able to expand that opportunity that I had to uh, to more people of color, uh, minorities, because traditionally um, we're left out of these conversations, we're left out of the, the, the political civic process um, for whatever reason that is. And so uh, when Charles started to talk about creating this CP generate or the CP um, initiative specifically aimed at people of color and millennials. Uh, that that's something that got me very excited, and it made me want to join the team full time. So along with working with you know our our general CP community that originally started uh, this organization, um, I'm able to bring in more people. Um, that look like me, more of my friends, and uh, merge and figure out creative ways to merge civics with, let's say, arts, uh, civics with technology, and figuring out new entry points that can attract um, my generation. So that's that's been something that I'm passionate about and gets me excited to work with with CP on a daily basis, and. That's why I'm here today. Thanks, so, Molly. Yeah. So I, I think David will break us up into smaller groups of maybe two to three, and we can share within those groups why we're here. You can go on, go deeper uh, like I did, or you could keep it more surface level and share why you're here today. Either is fine, um, but we'll have a couple minutes to share within a small group. Sounds good. All right, well, are you ready for me to pop folks in? Let's do it. Okay, so we're, so we're gonna go into the small groups randomly. And uh, so don't know who you're gonna end up with. And you're gonna have 10 minutes in there and I'll give you a 60 second notification for when you're get, we're gonna close it up. Um, okay, so see you soon. The, the question again is why you are here, why you are here.
Hey there, are you, are you just coming in? Yes. Okay, everybody's off in breakout rooms right now. Um, oh, okay. You want to send me to one? Yeah, I will. I'll send you into one, okay? Okay, Let's, thank you. Yeah, I'm David, by the way. Welcome here. Yes, David. My name's Doss. I live up in North Seattle. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Let's see. I'm part of that UU, the Steve Carlson UU with a vote thing, too. Oh, okay, cool. What people are asking, I mean, uh, answering the question right now in the breakout room, why are you here this morning? Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah. See you in a few. <clears throat> There's actually someone on this call I know. Whoops. Hi, 
turns out that I know a couple of people that are I see in the squares. I wasn't expecting to see this. We're back. We're back. <laughs> um, so I know David's going to say something or people are going to start saying something. But I just want to say that before the, the one we had before this, it was just like us presenting some slides and talking at our screens. This is the first time that we've been able to interact with the community during uh, a virtual workshop since coronavirus started. And uh, I love it. I miss talking to y'all. I, I bet all the staff members are thinking the same thing. It's been really cool. Yeah. We could end it right now. I'm fine. This is great. <laughs> That's good. Um, so, well, welcome back, everybody. And I totally feel the same way. So, the one one challenge you get into in uh, Zoom is getting asked to people to share and so on. So here's what I'd like to do is if you have a birthday within five days of today, if you have a birthday within five days of today, then I would ask you to share with the group why you are here today. Because you could be doing a lot of other things. Okay. So why are you here? So is anybody in that camp? Hmm. 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 All right. Anybody got a birthday in the month of June? <laughs> hmm. Hi, I'm Shelby Wilson. I do. <laughs> Shelby, you hit the jackpot. All right. Why are you here today? Um, I'm brand new to this. And I was talking with a friend a couple weeks ago, really about uh, just feeling the the desire to do something to contribute to healing our country. Um, and I left my job after eight years a couple of months ago. And so I've had some downtime. And I've, um, this is actually a little different from what I shared in my group, but I was inspired by hearing the other members <clears throat> about what I hadn't done while I was working at a full time job was um, I didn't prioritize the volunteering that I've always enjoyed doing in my in my life and um, and with the election happening in five months and voter registration closing in four months in many places I am just fired up to do something <clears throat> anything anything that even my small part that could um, make a tangible difference in our country um, and particularly the the outrage I feel that <clears throat> many people's basic human rights are not, um, they're not accessible to them right now. They don't even know about them. And I um, <clears throat> was introduced to this organization by a friend that I was having a, a conversation with um, just a couple of weeks ago, um, a couple of days after um, George Floyd was murdered. And um, she, she sent me this website and I looked at it and I was like, wow, this organization has their act together. Um, it's easy to figure out where to get information, to get a sense of who's leading this. Um, I love seeing young faces and faces that don't look like mine. Um, and I really enjoy facilitating things. I like uh, working behind the scenes and, um, and I love working with young people. Um, I'm 42, so I'm a, I'm a, I just had my 42nd birthday. Um, so I'm a Gen Xer, but, um, and I, on one hand, I wanna say I'm a young person, but I feel like I'm, you know, a little, <laughs> a few years beyond. Uh, millennials and um, I just I'd love to to learn how to get involved and so that's why I'm here today after attending a couple of um, events on zoom and just listening um, I've loved what I've heard and I am inspired by the group of people that I've been exposed to in this organization and um, I'd like to figure out how to be part of it and how to join you thank you Mm. Let's let's give her. Let's Happy give her. birthday! <laughs> hey, hey. Uh, so, CP staff, there's a couple key things that she said there. This is like an interview. She said she likes working with young people. Okay, you heard that. You heard the piece where she said the election is in uh, five months and voter reg ends in four months. You hear that? Yeah, okay. I wrote that down. You wrote that yeah, down. Yeah. You get Shelby. <laughs> yeah. you get, you're you're you you already bumped up to the top. It's not a competition, but Shelby's winning. Yeah. 
Thank you. Thank you, Shelby. Thank you so much. Um, thanks everybody for going in the breakout rooms and sharing with each other. Uh, we're going to turn it over now to, uh, to Maria and Charles and Daniel, I think, who are going to talk about, uh, I'm gonna, and I'm going to pop it up on the screen, some of our core values. So go ahead, you guys. Are you using a website? Yeah, I will. Yep. Cool. Great. Awesome. All right. So um, speaking of the website. If uh, in, many of you found this meeting, that means you saw the website. And one of the things that's prominent in two places on the website are uh, our what we call our, our circles. Um, and you can actually just scroll down. Oh. There you go, the common purpose way. Um, there we go. I don't know how many people know who David Donkey is. Um, probably all of you. He is famous for many things. Uh, technology previously was not one of those things. Um, this is one of his new superpowers he's got is he can uh, run technology for, for, for CP. He can also do it for you if you have an event or a party. Um, you can hire him uh, to facilitate uh, or produce. That's one of his services. He's hearing this for the first time, but I'm his agent also, as well as his coworker. So contact me if you, if you want him to host your Zoom party. Um, so these circles, this is, this is what we're about. This is everything that we do flows through these three circles. Uh, it, it started off as, as uh, uh, things that, we, that tended to be habitual for us. Some of them were uh, features of like, you know, what, how David runs things or how how I do things or what, you know, what, what Maria thinks is important to the organization. And then we started to really solidify these things. We started to say, you know, we actually don't want to do anything that is not connected to these three things. And so uh, Maria and Daniel and I are going to walk you through each of these and talk to you about what they mean and why they're super important to CP. All right, Charles. So I'm going to start with that mindset piece and, you know, just from our little breakout session just now and, you know, just understanding our folks in our community, this mindset piece is, is often the piece that is the reason why people are here. It is often uh, the reason that people um, are brought in, I should say, because sometimes they stay for, for the other pieces. But this mindset that we all have when we come in is that we believe our democracy should be just and inclusive and that we have a responsibility we have a responsibility to make it so by taking action right and we know that our democracy is not as just and inclusive as it should be for lots of reasons um mostly voter suppression uh you know, that's gerrymandering, that's voter ID laws, that's the, the closing of polling places and people having to wait in line for five hours to, in order to vote, you know, that kind of stuff. And all of these strategies and all of these, these, these tactics of voter suppression are intentional. And very often these things uh, tend to affect specific communities and that's communities of color young people and the elderly, and also poor people. And our common purpose community in general that is, is generally made up of folks who are white, um, folks who are retired, who have um, resources, whether that's the ability to travel or um, to learn and, and have a, a lot of education or to donate. Um, and so we recognize that those privileges that we have um, lead to our responsibility to help folks who don't have the same privileges and don't have the same access and don't have um, the same ease of voting as we do if you, if you live in Washington State and can vote by mail. So it's our responsibility to do something about it and not just you know, um, sitting around and getting angry at Twitter or at the news, we have to take action to do something about it. So that's, that's our, our mindset.
And I think Charles is going to talk about Mojo. Yeah. So Mojo is our, uh, our special sauce. Uh, this is what we feel like makes us really, really different. There are a lot of other smaller things that make us different, but um, in our mojo, these are the things that are both close to our heart and also what we believe makes it so that we will exist into the future as an organization. Um, in our breakout group, we talked about um, kind of the thing that was important to me when I joined um, and why I, why I left Starbucks. And it was because um, we can't just do this for 2020. We've got to do it for uh, 2024 and 2028 and every election in between that. Um, part of the reason why we're here is because in 2008, we all thought that we had changed the world. And it turns out that we didn't. Um, and what it takes is for us to do our part for democracy um, on a regular basis to kind of keep the lights on in this thing. Um, or we'll see, we'll see 2016 again. So how do you, how do you push that out into the future? How do you make it so that um, this work continues? Well, it turns out that um, people like doing this work with other people. And uh, they also uh, like to build relationships. And that's really why they're, why they're with us, why they stick around. Um, people come here for the work. You're here for the work that you see. Um, but they stay for the people. And so the number one thing in Mojo is that we do this work together in community and in teams. So the way that plays out is, is really, it's, it's kind of highfalutin, but it's also really tactical. Um, everything that we, every action that we take, whether it's the teams that we uh, at one time sent out across the country uh, into 20 states was the plan for 2020, um, to go knock on doors. The, the 12 states in 2018 or the seven states we went to in 2019, we sent out groups of folks who did this together. And they didn't just like travel at the same time. They landed in the same place. They went to the same organization together. They walked the same neighborhoods. If you've ever volunteered with a campaign, um, you know, you were asked, you're, you're given one turf, one map and asked to walk that by yourself. We don't do that. We don't do that. We work those together and then we have lunch together and then we go back out into the field together and we have dinner together and then we rinse and repeat. That's the way that we worked out in the field. Virtually, you've got some of the events that some of you have already attended. You've got the, uh, the Q&A sessions that Daniel runs on Fridays. You've got the working sessions that um, some of our volunteers are going to be taking up uh, that, are, that are weekly where you can meet folks and talk about doing the work. Um, the teams that are still active, the Florida team, the Michigan team, the Wisconsin team, they're doing really, really good work in these states. Um, they do the work and then they have uh, meetings and get togethers on Zoom. Um, team and community is so important to being able to do this work, to being able to balance work life and personal life and what's going on in this country um, and have somebody to, to talk to about it. That's what is, is important to us, and that is a part of our mojo. Um, the next part is really about um, not only the just and inclusive democracy that we hope to build with the country that we wanna see, but it's also continuing this effort into the future, and that's in investing in next generation leaders. Some of the folks that you went into broke, breakout rooms with. Um, our staff is majority POC and majority uh, women, intentionally, intentionally. And it's investing in these folks that we believe that we create this, this America that, um, that, that we hope uh, uh, everyone sees, not just the folks that, that come and work with us. Um, these, these young folks lead our teams out into the field. Uh, they come up with our strategies. We come up with, with our strategies. Um, and, and to us, next generation is relative. It really is. Our, you heard Maria say our... A uh, volunteer base is largely retired and white. Well, for, for them, David Donkey is next generation. Shelby, as a Gen Xer, um, you are next generation. I'm only four, five years younger than you. Um, I'm, a, I'm a millennial, but I'm, I'm next generation. I'm the next one up to kind of take the baton and, and lead into the future. So uh, we take this really, really seriously. 
And these folks are given a lot of responsibility and are able to lead more than you see at other organizations. And they'll be doing it even after the election. So a bunch of efforts out there, you know, you, you know, Pod Save America guys or um, a bunch of other organizations that are hyper focused on 2020, those are all going to melt away. But because Common Purpose invests in next generation leaders in a real way um, with salaries and health benefits, uh, you're going to see these same faces on November 4th doing this exact work. So that's our mojo. That's what makes us different. Daniel? Yeah, thanks, Charles. And thanks, Maria. Um, now that we have those two things, and we know why it is that we're participating uh, in, in this type of work, and, and why it's so important to be involved and engaged, uh, and we have a community around us, a group of people that we can feel continually inspired by and sustained by, um, now it's time to get to work, and that's mobilize. Uh, and I'm going to talk a little bit, obviously, there's this two points there, but um, I also want to address it as uh, what we would be doing in a typical year um, versus actually what we're, what we're doing now and, and how to be doing work um, right now today just amid everything that is happening. Um, and so let's just take it from, from the start. Um, we do work. That is what we're, we're here to do. It's great that we do it together. It's fundamental that we do it together, but um, you're, you're all here because you want to be engaged um, and you want to be out doing something that really matters. And so what that looks like for us at Common Purpose is um, we register voters and then we also go and catalyze those voters um, to actualize the change that they want in their communities. So uh, for us, that looks like in a typical year, um, finding a partner organization um, in key states across the country um, to uh, work with and, and partner with to um, go to that state in, in a community two times a year, at least. Um, the first time would generally be in the spring, early summer, um, right around now. And uh, we'd be traveling into communities to go and register folks to vote. That means that we are out, um, uh, you know, block walking, we are knocking on doors, we are uh, introducing ourselves, we are um, speaking on you know, behalf of the organization, we're making contacts in the community, and we're really just helping um, grow that organization's capacity to understand its community better um, and really be present for it. And uh, these types of trips have been really fun and really successful. Uh, I know that uh, MJ led one of the final trips that we had just before um, everything with coronavirus um, happened. He took about what 40 folks um, and registered more than 5,000 or I had contact with more than 5,000 people um, in Florida. Um, and so that's the type of impact that we want to have. We want to take a bunch of people and we want to meet a bunch of people. Um, then what that looks like in a typical year on the other side of that is that we, we want to catalyze those people later on in the year. And so when we say catalyze, um, we don't mean that we want that person just to vote but we want that person to be inspired by us returning to them from the spring and summer and have already done the work in their community to uh, activate people in their lives, activate the people in their homes, um, on their, their, their neighbors, on their block, or maybe the groups that they're a part of in their community. Um, and so that's really, that's really what it, it looks like is that we're gonna come back um, in, a, in the fall and knock the exact same doors, um, walk the exact same blocks, work with the exact uh, organizers um, and staff people that we worked with in the spring, and and really let folks know that um, it's about uh, really building long-term sustainable connections. Uh, we work really hard uh, with partner organizations to let them know that this is not just about a, a given election, and we're not just here to to show up in late October, November. Um, knock a bunch of doors and then leave. No, we want to have sustainable relationships uh, that really matter to not only to us, but also to our partners, um, no matter the state that we're going into. And so um, that's the first part of Mobilize. Uh, we can't have the catalyzing voters without the registration. Um, right now, what this looks like is it's, it's a little bit different. And so um, we're still working with the same types of amazing partner orgs. Um, that we do work with, whether that's um, you can vote in North Carolina 
or that's Pittsburgh United and Pennsylvania who take really, really amazing um, voting justice centered organizations. And we're gonna continue to work with them for all types of volunteer opportunities that we have. Um, and right now in this moment, that looks like uh, calling in to uh, Maine with the League of Women Voters and Maine Citizens for Clean Elections to get folks um, applying to their absentee ballots um, ahead of July's primary. That looks like uh, in previous weeks um, leading up to this Tuesday, uh, calling in to registered uh, uh, Georgia Democrats to get them their, their absentee ballot application in the hopes um, that there would be fewer people in line um, and that people could participate um, equally and safely in, in democracy. And uh, as we all know, that's, it's an imperfect process and one that we're committed to, to uh, being a part of through November. Um, so for us, what it looks like is right now making a lot of phone calls, making a lot of texts, writing a lot of letters, doing a lot of postcards. Um, and all with the intent to activate pe people for democracy um, right now for their primaries and then leading into um, the general election in November. So anything that we have um, that a partner organization has for us, we will pass on to the volunteer community and all of that will be organized um, on our website on our national field work page. Um, the second point of, uh, of mobilize, is that we follow the lead of our partner organizations. Um, and to that point, uh, our partners know so much more than we could ever know about their communities, right? And so I like to think of this point as both um, logistical and philosophical. Um, logistically, um, we at Common Purpose don't wanna pretend that we um, know any more about a community than they know. And we can't um, pretend like to expect to lead a group of people into a community without truly knowing it, right? When we get into places like, you know, Houston, Texas, for example, is, is a trip that I led earlier this year. Um, I, I can't take 30 folks into Houston without um, trusting that the partners that are receiving me on the ground um, know exactly the, the, the streets and the neighbors that we're, that we're asking for, um, the demographics that we're um, really trying to target that week. Um, they, you know, I can't pretend to know um, the best place to stay with the best, you know, in the, the best area with um, the best food around because that's a, that's a big uh, aspect of a common purpose trip is food and, and a little bit of wine as well. Um, and so, um, you know, we really rely on our partner organizations to just have a smooth trip that is successful and has our folks feeling comfortable and really has the knowledge in the neighborhood or the given place that we're we're doing work in. Um, philosophically, it also means um, that we follow their lead because um, we can't pretend in Seattle and Washington and the Northwest um, as a community of people that we know any better um, for what's best for that community. Um, and so we are um, completely in service of a partner organization's mission. Um, there's a, a phrase uh, that folks like to use that it's it's uh, our boots, but your ground. Um, and so really when we travel, we try to instill in the value that it, we are 100% in service of the organization's mission and that we're willing to follow them in exactly whatever that we do, that we check our agenda um, at the door and that we're just ready to do work. Um, and that, regardless of whether we're in coronavirus or not, um, that's always going to be a value and something that we're always going to um, aspire to do. So that's mobilize. Excellent. So let's uh, let's hop into the next section. I think uh, we're we're moving at a really good pace here. I'm liking this new uh, this new format. David. Sure. Also, just want to let's let's take two minutes right now uh, on. And you can chat, you can tap, you can type a question in the chat if you've got a question um, based on what you just heard. Let's just take two minutes right now. If you have a question, pop it in there so Maria and Charles and Daniel could, could, uh, could address those.
Yeah, the CP get involved in advocacy. You want to just show the website again there, David? Yep, we'll do. This is a quick answer. That's great. I'm assuming you mean um, there's not a specific type of advocacy you're talking about. Yeah, what what I was really thinking about is just by example, you know, so Georgia, I know CP really worked on calling people and getting them to order their absentee ballots, but we know things were such a mess and a lot needs to change between now and the fall. I don't know to what extent CP gets involved in advocating for the changes that need to happen. Yeah, this is a great setup. This is awesome. Did someone ask you to ask that question, Karen? That's that's just great. Um, so David's going to show you our, so right at the top there is our navigation um, section and there's, there's advocacy right there. So we're going to click on that. We actually have an initiative. We won't go into it in too much detail, but we have been doing this since, uh, since April. And uh, this is how successful we've been. There are over 500 people that are doing this, that are reaching out to elected officials for them in 27 states. We've made 20,000 contacts. Um, I did the math on this yesterday. I was showing my parents this, Daniel. And um, that's like, that's over 700 contacts per state. 700 contacts per state made to four people. So two senators, one governor, and then one, one secretary of state, right? 700 is, uh, is pretty substantial. And so we've, uh, we've bothered them enough that they have <laughs> started to feel the pressure. And uh, this is reaching out over email and text, or email and phone calls and uh, Twitter, actually. Um, and all of our initiatives that are remote have this like step-by-step -step process. So you'll see it here, there's four steps here that you can kind of look at later. But um, all of our state-based things have step-by-step -step process. Daniel's done a great job of breaking it all, all out for folks. Let's get to another question here. All right, I see one that says, um, has coronavirus uh, affected us? How has coronavirus impacted the work that we are doing? And uh, that's, a, that's a good question, an important question as we, we sit here and talk about how we've been doing all this traveling and going door to door and thinking about uh, how we're going to be able to continue to do this work. And I think the first thing I want to say about that, and Charles and Daniel, you guys jump into if you have something, but the, the first thing that I, I thought of is that coronavirus, uh, like it affects us in our work, but the first thing is that it affects voters. Right, it affects them so that they have to risk their lives when they're going to go to the polls. Um, it makes the need for uh, early voting periods to be much longer, and it makes the need for mail-in ballots to be um, much more widespread, so that people have that option and don't have to leave their homes in order to vote. Um, so, so that's the first thing we're recognizing that this is definitely going to make it hard for people to vote and for people to campaign. The second thing I thought of was, oh my gosh, we don't get to travel all of the, or we might not get to travel all of the, the trips that we had planned at the beginning of the year. Um, they started to get suspended. And with all the work that we had planned, I started to get more and more bummed. And then I got really, really bummed because the thing that really fills me up in the CP community is getting a chance to be with you all and to be in person and to sit together and eat together and talk. And I was like really, really bummed out. But CP has an amazing, amazing ability to, to really adapt in the middle of these challenges like this, but also um, really lean into it and grow from it. And throughout this whole time, we've actually just added a lot of programs. We've added staff capacity. We've added all of the opportunities to get involved remotely with the advocacy, with the national field work and the Washington field work where you can be doing letter writing, postcarding, calling, continuing to register and contact voters. Um, and all of that is added and all of that is work that is going to continue on regardless of if coronavirus is going to be hindering us or not. So it, 
it was cool for us to be able to add all of those things and also continue to be who we are, continue to, um, uh, like that mojo piece says, center and amplify and support next generation leaders and all of that work. Um, and also still have community to still be having things like we have a, um, a book club that, that we have and there's article club and there's, there's a, a movie club thing that was happening for a while. We added our podcast um, that we had got, got started and that has been having episodes daily where you can tap in and learn and listen. We have um, a, a unit now of folks that has been put together to uh, help create senses of community amongst the state teams that are gonna be having uh, meetings amongst the state teams in, in our group so that we can continue to engage with each other. Um, it will be via Zoom and through breakout sessions, uh, but it's definitely that piece that, that brings our community together and makes us um, stay accountable with each other and get to celebrate with each other as well. So I think we've, we've added, we've grown and just really stepped up our game with the amount of opportunities we have. And we are still planning for travel. Um, when when uh, we're able, we're, we're going to be having conversations with uh, health officials and, and health experts, folks who, who know better than us what would be the, health, the healthy and, and safe ways for us to be able to travel. We're going to be looking strategically at the states who have done a good job of handling the, the pandemic and the outbreak in their state and, and recognizing which ones um, that often correlate with blue states who are bluer states who have been handling this a little bit better um, that we feel comfortable traveling to. And it's always going to be up to our partner organizations and the individuals of, of people who want to travel because we recognize that everybody has, um, you know, uh, they're coming from this from a different place, whether that's health issues or um, if you might be in that bracket of folks who are really in danger, um, we can understand how that might make you not want to travel. But if you're someone who, you know, is saying, you know, the folks that are waiting in line in Georgia in order to vote are risking their lives. And so maybe I can too, and, and I can put on a mask and, and be safe and, and I'm willing to help out um, uh, if they are willing to risk their lives too, um, then, then we welcome that as well. So uh, we're, we're just gonna keep pushing. Coronavirus cannot stop us. That's what I'd say. What else we got? That is very, it's perfect, Maria, perfect. Um, <laughs> I, um, we have Michael asking, when you sign up to work, are you assigned to a group or location or do you have some flexibility? Uh, you have so much flexibility um, before coronavirus and, and even now, so. Um, you get to sign up for what uh, for what interests you. Uh, that we have some folks who are uh, really interested in the state because they have ties to that state, whether they grew up there, or they have family there. Um, maybe it's just you're just genuinely interested in that state, like I am with Texas. Um, or maybe there's a specific race that you want to get involved in. Um, so no, you have as much flexibility as you want um, to sign up for travel. Um, using any of our state sign-up lists on our website. Um, and then you also have the flexibility to participate in whatever remote, like digital opportunity feels the most comfortable for you. Um, we don't really assign people. We'll tell you kind of um, what we're working on, what we're focusing on and prioritizing. Like if there's a big thing that we really want everybody in CP to be involved with and making calls for, we'll, we'll be sure to let everybody know. But um, no, we just want it to be as accessible and kind of flexible as, as you want it to be. Yeah, great question. And do we have time? Do we have time to take Shelby's? Well, I think, uh, I think David can incorporate that one into his, into his, uh, his section here. Awesome. Um, uh, so David's, uh, David's most favorite thing to do is to um, do homework on politics and to, to think a strategy. Um, he was doing all this before CP even started. Um, and now he gets to do it as a 
as a job. So he's in, in heaven. Um, so this next section is, is all about our 2020 states, why we chose them, why they're still important. Um, and we're going to we're going to jump also into kind of what we're doing in some of these states specifically. I think Daniel will probably kick it to you on, on some of these. And then we can talk about our partners that are in those states as well. David. Sure. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, um, team. I, this is the nerd in me. You are about to, all of you, if you haven't seen this before, you're going to see like the kid who loves chocolate showing up at the chocolate factory this is about to be what we're going to talk about now but i do want to make one slight correction to charles this is not the favorite thing for me about this job the favorite thing for me about this job are the team is the team okay love working with them and how inspiring they all are so uh, on your mute i'm sorry on your zoom um at the bottom or at the top where you have your different functions of things you can do there's one that's called reactions Okay, and if you click on reactions, it might offer you four or five different options or it might offer you one option or two. But um, can you give me a thumbs up if you can see the thumbs up? All right, the thumbs up. And look at that, talk, there we go, there we go. All right, okay, then unclick it, please. It goes away automatically after a while. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so there's also a hand wave there. Don't do that yet. Don't do the hand wave. But I understand that everybody here probably wants to win the presidency. Okay. Um, but I want to ask you this question. Um, do you want to beat and get rid of Mitch McConnell? Thumbs up or hand wave? Thumbs up or hand wave? Okay. <laughs> Right, and so the way we beat Mitch McConnell is either defeating him in Kentucky, which is what uh, some people focus on, and there's a primary coming up there in a couple of weeks for, and there's two main candidates, Amy McGrath and Charles Booker, um, or the Democrats gain control of the Senate, right? And so what I want to do is um, is talk a little bit about the states that we select and why we select them, what's the strategy behind those? Okay, so I'm going to pop up the uh, website again, and we're gonna go over here to, oh, I forgot, I gotta share screen. Gonna go over here to uh, the Moore and the 2020 state selection. By the way, Charles and Wole are, you know, the ones totally responsible for this website. Um, if it was, if I was running the website, it'd be a bunch of PDFs. Okay, so <laughs> this, is, uh, this is great. But here's our states that we've selected a focus for 2020. And the colors vary in intensity because they, it's like the kind of the importance, the relative rankings of the importance. But there's 20 states on there that we have selected. And we select them through a series of uh, layers and thinking. And Charles has written this up. And there's my thinking. I really didn't want this to be up here, but Charles like, no, no, it's got to be up to the first thing. But there's my thinking and assessment. There's leadership team planning. There's expert outlooks. We have, uh, we really pay attention to a bunch of expert analysts present in the political arena. We have a couple partnerships with national organizations uh, that, that guide us. Black Pack has been really helpful for us on the national level. We also pay attention to the National Democratic Redistricting uh, Committee their work, represent us, their work as well. Uh, we take input from our community. Uh, we definitely do, we often do, in terms of thinking about states. And then our local state partners talk to us a lot about races and comp, uh, elections that matter. So we, we spend a lot of time thinking about our states and our commitment to all of you as volunteers is that we will not waste your time in CP. Uh, we will not ask you to engage in states that fall at, at either end of a continuum. On one end of that continuum, it could be, it's, a, it's an, a foregone conclusion that the Democrats are going to win. We're not gonna ask you to engage in those elections because they're, they're not, we're, we can't be a difference maker. Um, and we're also not going to engage in elections where there just isn't any chance to kind of fight for voting justice. 
uh, where they're just, I mean, we have to be strategic and calibrate in that way. And it's, a, it's, it's our ethical commitment to you in terms of your time and resources that we will honor that, uh, the choices that we make. So that means we end up working in a lot of competitive places, places that really where we can make a difference. And we have uh, four criteria. On the left are our states, and then there's four columns of criteria. Um, and I, we kind of work from the right side to the left side. Is, there an import, is the state an important presidential state? Is the state an important U.S. Senate state? Is it important for the U.S. House in, in terms of a, a couple kind of pivotal key elections where the, the House control is won or lost? And then are there state level elections for governorships, for attorney generals, for secretary of states? Secretary of states really, really, really matter, okay, um, in, in around voting. And uh, Supreme Court elections. We were part of the success in Wisconsin, and that was a, that was a mountaintop moment for us, all right? All of these matter, and you may be here because you're animated or engaged around the presidency and Trump is just, he's a demagogue and he's horrible and, and we're with you 100%. Some of you might be here because you really wanna get rid of Mitch McConnell, uh, either personally or just remove control of the Senate from him. And we are with you on that too. I, in fact, I probably, if I could only pick winning one thing, either the presidency or the Senate, I would probably take the Senate. OK, because the importance of confirming judges, uh, including the Supreme Court, Ruth Bader Ginsburg is 88 years old next year. All right. Um, so right now, uh, the court's balance is, is conservative, but it's within a fighting chance. Uh, you, you lose Ginsburg and Breyer in terms of uh, retirements and a Republican appoints. Forget it. That's gone for that's gone for 30, 40 years. OK. But that's not just, it's not just, federal, it's not just the uh, Supreme Court, it's every federal judge in this country. Every federal judge in this country is appointed by, approved, I'm sorry, uh, nominated by the president and approved by the Senate. And Donald Trump, with Mitch McConnell's support, has approved and, and gotten his judges nominated for more than 30% uh, of all federal judges in this country. All right, it's, it's, it's remarkable. Uh, the House matters uh, tremendously. We know that. We see that now. And we have worked and will continue to work in a lot of key swing districts for the House. Alyssa Slotkin and Haley Stevens in Michigan, Dean Phillips in uh, Minnesota, Dina Titus in, uh, and Susie Lee in Nevada, um, Lucy McBath in um, Georgia, Sharice Davids in Kansas. Uh, and on and on. These are all competitive states. We've been there. Um, so these are competitive districts. We've been there. We will be there again. And then state elections. There are five Supreme Court elections this year in the state of Iowa. There are two in Michigan. There are two in Ohio. There are several in Texas. All of these matter in really significant ways. And we could easily, I could spend a lot of time. I could, I would be happy happy to devote like another hour or two in Q&A on this. But these are our states of focus, all right? These ones right here. And what we do is we partner with those organizations, we, we find partner organizations in those states, and then we, we do the work of trying to connect with them, of trying to actually build a connection with them. And uh, Daniel and Maria, in a second here, I just wanna ask you to, to talk just, really briefly, not about the whole process, but about why the partner org that we have in the states that you're in is really great. Uh, just what we do is we, we vet, we look, we, we look for community-based organizations that um, are really rooted in the community, um, that have a commitment to voting justice. Uh, we, uh, they need to have capacity to handle a, a group of 40 to 60 people. Um, they, they, uh, we, you know, there has to be a, a, a relationship where they feel comfortable with us and the values that we have around next generation leadership and around community and teams. And so we don't end up working with large national organizations. National organizations tend to operate at a higher level of strategy. We tend to end up working with state-based or local organizations where we are real difference makers to help them. Um, that really feels good to us. That feels like we're, what we're trying to do. We are about common purpose and we are also about common power, all right? Building out and sustaining common power in these areas. That's what we are committed to and that's, what they, that's, why, that's how we can support them. So real quick, 
Uh, Maria, and then Daniel, could you tell us about the organization that you that you found and 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 just real a vignette of why they're great for us? Yes, I'm, I'm happy to. So uh, when I got started with Common Purpose in 2018, I was uh, a, a volunteer and I was a volunteer state captain to be someone who leads a team to one of these states. And I was uh, the state captain for the Nevada team. And uh, we were told as the state captains that, you know, it's important to us that we work with a partner. You as a state captain, you need to go find a partner organization on the ground that, to work with and um, facilitate that connection so that we've got a place to show up to um, when, when we arrive in the state. And I, I reached out, I, I did a lot of emailing to, and, and Googling and trying to find a good organization. It was really tough to find a good partner organization. I was, I was looking for the things that David mentioned of, you know, someone who's really doing the work for the community, within the community, um, a partner organization that uh, is, is established enough and um, has the resources for a team to come and, and they're doing these voter registration um, efforts. It was kind of tough, but I found a, a great organization uh, the Progressive Leadership Alliance of Nevada to work with, and we eventually um, built a, a good relationship where they they've been asking us to come back, and it has it has been a really really great thing. They've they've got a great partnership with um, the uh, Pyramid Lake Paiute Reservation, so they do a lot of work on the reservation. That's uh, one of our team members calling me there from Nevada, actually, <laughs> and uh, they 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 did a good job of making sure that they were hiring and finding folks who didn't have traditional pathways into the work um, to be able to be organizers and, and to work with PLAN. Um, but we didn't come back to Nevada in 2019 because we had had so many awesome successes together in, in 2018, which you can, you can find some of those successes, I think, on our website. Um, so in 2020, we were we were knowing that we needed to go to Iowa. Iowa was a place we hadn't gone to in 2018 or in 2019. And so they said, you know, Maria, would you be down to do the Iowa team? And I was like, sure, I guess. I, I didn't know a whole lot about Iowa admittedly, but you know, wherever you need me, I'm ready to go. The, the reason I shared with you my experience of finding a partner organization in Nevada is because my experience with finding a partner organization in Iowa, um, while it was hard, was much easier. Because when I, I was reaching out and trying to email organizations in 2018, CP had just gotten started and did not have the track record that we have now. Now, we can go to partner organizations and say, look, we have over a couple thousand people here in Seattle who have been doing this work um, over the past few years. This is how we show up. Here are all the states, the 20 states that we've done this, all of our partners and how we've showed up. Um, this is our track record. This is how we can help contribute to the successes just by showing up as volunteers. And being able to have those couple of years of saying, we have been doing this and doing it well, uh, really, really helped with finding a partner organization. And in Iowa, we found Iowa uh, Citizens for Community Improvement. They've been around for a few decades. Um, they, they are also really interested in building people power, working in the community for the community, um, and fighting for everything from voter registration to accessible care, um, working on the environment, um, and making sure that they center communities of color in that space as well. And I will say both times, the only reason I was able to make a connection with these partner organizations is because someone on my team, a volunteer like you all, on my, that joined my team had some connection to the state in some way, and they were able to um, you know, ask their family in that state, or maybe they were born in that state, and say, hey, I know, I know a good organization for you. So um, those, those connections from the people within our community were important, and um, just the amazing work we've been doing. Uh, it has been really important to help connect with partner organizations and show them that we are the real deal. Like we show up and we're for real and, and we're going to get it done for you guys.
Yeah, I agree that that last point. I'm I'm sure. So I started uh, uh, volunteering as a state lead in the same way that Maria did um, for the state of Texas um, and started my partner org process, I think, like early last fall, fall 2019. And I to Maria's point, like I'm I, I believe that it was probably a lot easier for me to like pitch CP in this community of volunteers from the Northwest because CP had, had um, so many wins at that point of like this track record of like, look at what we did in this state and here and here. And you can find all that on our website. Um, it's pretty cool infographic of all the types of um, elections and campaigns that we've been a part of, but, um, and folks that we've registered. But um, when we pitched to a couple of different organizations in Texas, the one that we wanted the most um, was this, is this organization called Move Texas that is now our partner um, in, uh, in Texas. They exist in uh, three different cities. They have offices in three different cities. Um, and they also exist and do programming on every major college campus in the state of Texas, of which there are many, um, is what I'm finding out. Um, and uh, Move Texas is uh, particularly important for me and because it aligns with the CP mission of like next generation leaders. Um, it's entirely all um, youth, youth based, youth, youth focused about um, getting young people, particularly young people of color, um, to uh, the access to participate civically um, and all of the tools and skills that they need to be able to have careers in civic engagement um, and, uh, and access these types of um, opportunities for campaigns, registering people to vote. They registered more than 4,000 people in a day on National Voter Registration Day across the state of Texas. Um, and uh, just, just really amazing folks that have been super welcoming to us. Um, and we look forward to hopefully working with them in the fall, but we'll have to see. Um, Move Texas is, is a great one. And I really recommend that you go check out all of these partners. Great, thanks Maria and Daniel. Um, I wanna hit three things. And then if there are any questions, I'll take uh, any other ones, I'll take those or we'll take those, but then we'll move to the next segment, our last one. Three things I wanna mention. Right now under the more up here is the page I'm looking at that we are looking at right now, 2020 state selection. Here's our partners information. All those folks that have just been referenced, you can see who they are, look them up. That's our impact page. That's where you see all of the successes that we've had as an organization. Um, there's a lot. It's really, really cool. Like, like way more than we were hoping to have, okay? Um, and then here's our podcast. If you want it there, we got a bunch of stuff on the YouTube channel. This is where this will go when we're done. And then a blog that we have. So a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff on the, there. Second, um, Diana, I believe you've asked a question, either, either Diane or Diana have asked a question about, hey, do a talk about the important candidates, the important states. Actually, we have a version of that talk right down here. Um, if you scroll to the bottom of this page, we have this more info for click here for more information on key elections that inform our 2020 strategy. If you click on that, then you get my favorite thing, a PDF, all right? And you get, you get uh, the, the listing by state of the state key races, the Senate House race that we're engaged in, and what happened in 2016 in the presidential race. Like, hey, we're in Alaska, because um, Dan Sullivan, the Republican, that was a very close election in 2014, the senator there. And Al Gross is running against him. He's a doctor, he's a fisherman, and he makes the coolest videos ever. And so we're there to support Al Gross, uh, whose mom happens to live here in Seattle and has been kind of pushing us to engage with Al. And so we've had a chance to sit down with him um, and talk to him. But here's all of our states, and here's the state key races, the Senate and House races that we're engaged in, and how close the presidential races are. So there it is right there for all of our states. Um, and then third, I wanted to, um, uh, to just go back up and say that all of the work for each of these states is in our national field work tab. And we don't have them all remotely right now. We have some states remotely and we're, we're getting more. Um, but this is the work that uh, Daniel oversees on a daily basis for us. This is work for the Alyssa Slotkin campaign in Michigan. Uh, a really incredible freshman uh, congresswoman um, in the state, House member. This is with the League of Women Voters in Maine. We're helping folks get absentee ballots, same as actually the Slotkin campaign, helping them get absentee ballots. Um, 
we're working with a group called the Arizona Ground Game, and there's more coming. Um, we will have up shortly some Florida work, uh, Montana work. We had Georgia work up. It'll be back. All of that. And mostly what we're doing remotely is helping people get absentee ballots. And it's really actually pretty easy because when you call for us, for these organizations, they've already filtered the list and they're not, call, they're not asking us to call to persuade Republican voters. They're asking us to simply help people to get ballots and the lists that they're giving us are people that tend to fall into more progressive communities, okay? So we're helping people to get those ballots. And when we go on the ground in those states, that's what we're often, those are the neighborhoods we're usually working in as well. Okay, so up here at the top again, Charles showed you the advocacy tab earlier. That's how we're collect, uh, connecting with and uh, trying to influence and pressure state legislators and congressional members to adopt the right policies. That's officials and our field work is our, our national field work, our voter-based work. Here in the state of Washington, we also have some voter-based work. We're registering voters right now. Um, and so if you go to the bottom of that page, we're registering voters up and down the I-5 corridor. Okay, let's see if there's any quick questions here that uh, need a verbal answer, or I can see if we can type them in. Let me uh, ask you about complexity levels. Yeah. Charles, go ahead on that. Yeah, I just want to comment on that. Uh, I remember a workshop back in 2019 when I, I looked to you and I was like, David, I think we should show them the website. And you're like, we're not showing them the website. And now you're walking people through the website. Crazy. It's crazy. Um, it's good. It's been a cultural exchange. Um, let's, just stop for one, let's just stop for one second and say that, you know, the other day, Charles watched something, the, the Obama, you know, when Barack Obama did his announce is a commencement speech a week ago with LeBron James. And then they had a, a round table and Charles was like, yeah, I watched it on CNN, but I didn't get to see that much. I'm like, dude, you have to watch it online. You get to see all these <laughs> things that happen. All right. I was, I said, I'm, I was streaming it. Why weren't you streaming it? And so we are in upside down bizarro world. Yeah, okay. <laughs> that's great. Hey, you see my map here? It's a laminated piece of paper. This is ridiculous. I'm regressing. Um, so, so the the <laughs> to the question, the complexity levels. Can you pop into? Yeah, just just go just go down a little bit. So this was uh, this is after after some feedback from our volunteers um, that they went into some of uh, one of these volunteer opportunities and it was a lot tougher than they thought it would be. And um, we realized that we were kind of letting folks down by, by not warning them ahead of time. So these complexity levels tell you what, what to expect. Um, the advocacy initiative is a level one complexity. And then um, most of the things that have you reaching out through another uh, partner organization is going to be a level two. If we think you're calling voters that are, that are, um, uh, maybe not going to be friendly to you or what you're asking for, um, we'll, we'll label it a level three because we don't, we don't want you jumping into something that heavy if um, it could possibly be uh, uh, a, a, not a negative experience for you. And some people are ready for that and that's great. And like jump into that if you're ready for that kind of thing, but we don't want you accidentally joining an effort if you're just getting your feet wet, that's going to uh, have that kind of experience. Yeah, so back over here on advocacy. Advocacy is our love is lo a level one thing. Okay, level one. Advocacy is you contacting these elected officials, leaving them voicemails, um, sending them emails, tweeting at them. And let me just preempt a standard question we get on the advocacy work. Does it matter if you're out of state? Actually, it almost never matters that you're out of state. They're just chronicling how many calls they get, how many emails they get, how many tweets they get. Most of the time, it doesn't matter. It does occasionally, but most of the time, it doesn't. And we are making a difference. These, these five states we've had wins in so far in this election. Um, all right, I think that I'm going to, let's see if there's anything else here right now. Um, Okay, uh, I want to just finish my piece and then MJ and Larcy, you're going to take over. And I think we can do a, a breakout room in that last session. I think that'll mm -hmm. be nice. Um, let me just come off of the screen share here for a second. Um, I have the privilege, and that's what it is, to work with, you know, an MJ, a Wole, a Larcy, a Charles, a Maria, a Daniel, AJ, Jamie Lynn, and on down the list. Um, 
And the reason we are all here and the reason we are glad you're here, but we don't want to be subtle about this, is to do the work. All right? We are here to do this work. All right, we are gonna do it in community and in teams. We're gonna put next generation leaders at the front of this. We're gonna work with partner orgs. Those are all philosophical positions that we take as an organization. And we are all in for those things, non-negotiables. And we're, we're gonna get off this Zoom call in a little while here, and then it's, it's time to go to work, all right? It's time to go to work. And so in the midst of this pandemic, in the midst of, the racial injustices that we have to get fixed in this country. The way that we contribute to all of this is through the work of voting justice. That's what we do. And that's, that's what we're here to do. So we want you to do the work. That's what we're here for. All right. So thank you all so much. Happy at any point in time. You can always reach us at our email at hello at cpnow.org with any follow-up questions about any of the states or any of that action. So thanks a lot. I'm gonna pass it along to colleagues here. Thanks, David. I know you all are pumped up. There's a lot of strategy. There's easy access to just get plugged in. Um, you see the mastermind behind our plans, why we're targeting those key uh, electoral races. Um, but I wanted to take a step back a little bit. I know we're all really used to the squares in our daily lives right now. This is how we are now connected to the world. But just to put into perspective what we were doing pre-COVID. So we would do these events, these introductory workshops at Washington Hall. And the first, of the, 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 the first few months of the year, uh, we hosted a total of about two so far at that point before COVID hit. Our last workshop at Washington Hall hosted close to 200 people who got word what we're doing, who got word of how well we were doing the work that we were doing. Um, and people were really, really pumped up to, to expand the work that we were doing. And at the last workshop we did, we ran out of chairs and we actually had to play musical chairs and people were giving up um, time sitting down in their chairs to, to others who were sitting on the floor or, were, or who were standing up the whole time. That definitely was energizing. So this is a different route. Uh, we understand and we all know, um, and we look forward to having that again. That is one thing that is a, as you can see, is one of the, one of our foundational values in this organization is community. And we look forward to seeing you face to face. We look forward to having coffee with you again. Um, and, th but even though that part of our workshop has ended, it still has not stopped the, the, our commitment to act to something. So we are trying to find ways to get creative and engaging with all of you. Uh, a few, you've heard, we did, we've done trivia. You've heard we have book club. Um, and it's, it's, it's not, it's not going to end because we want, we want you to stay focused on, on what's going to happen in 2020 and also stay committed to beyond 2020. So this portion of, of our workshop really is about trying to make sure your, your ideas, your hopes are going to be put into some action steps. So I know I'm committed to, to continuing this work. Um, we're, we launched a, a new program that's committed to engaging college students. I'm happy to launch that on July 1st. So we are trying to reach all generations to get involved because strength in numbers, and this is the, this is the, the core to power is action. Um, and so, yes, you've heard the strategy. Yes, you've heard what's coming up next. Yes, you've heard uh, all of the wonderful partner organizations that we need to expand their reach. We need to uh, help mobilize remotely how to get those voters to the polls this November. So MJ, I know you are um, also a creative in this organization and have come up with some really fun ways to, to get involved. Um, other, other communities to get involved and other um, communities to, to expand this work. What have you been doing lately? Yeah, of course. Um, first, I want to say, excuse my jacket. It is cold. I'm cold. I just moved into a new house and I'm just 
it's just been cold, but I'm a little better now. Um, yeah, no, definitely. Thank you all for being here. Um, someone commented that this has been inspiring. And I want to say that you all inspire us to continue the work. I feel like, you know, the, the, when I see new faces and realize how much we're not alone in this, I, I get inspired. I get motivated to continue the work. Um, as a young uh, woman of color, as a young Latinx immigrant, um, I, this work is so important to me and to my community. And Larcy was saying, I am also going to be launching, it's already in the works and it's already kind of doing the work, but um, a Spanish team that I was hoping would travel to um, different states this year, the ones that we're already focusing on and would do work in Spanish to outreach to communities, Latinx communities across the country um, to create awareness about voting rights and voting. And now it's shifted a little bit, right? We've all shifted a little bit. And as the organization shifted, so did my, my project, my, my idea. And now I'm proud to say that we have done calls in Arizona recently in the past few, a couple of months. Um, and we've, we're about to roll out an opportunity in Florida where we will be um, doing uh, work there as well in a very uh, predominantly POC um, uh, Latinx community. And I'm really excited. We're gonna be talking to about 15,000 voters remotely uh, through a phone bank. So that's something that I have um, not put together by myself. Um, I have done this in community as we do work in um, common purpose. Um, or CP. And so it's really great to see everyone here. I am so motivated, like I mentioned. I am so excited for this new opportunity that I've rolled out with community, with people that believe that my community, the Latinx community, also needs awareness and education around their voting rights. Um, and it's just been great, really, to, to, come, to, to bring this idea um, out, of, out of a trip from Florida when I was there in February. And it's just been an honor to work uh, aside with my partner, Bert Greenwood, who was um, such an inspiration for me as well in that work. And I am continuing to do that work here from home and I'll continue to do it until, until, until November. And um, I'm just inspired and really hyped to continue the work. So thank you, Larcy, for, for, um, for, you know, kind of, moving me into that space of, of talking about this, this opportunity. I think as, as a, like I mentioned, as a young Latinx uh, yes. person in this organization, yes, it wasn't yes. something that I thought about doing right when I came in, but it has definitely been um, an opportunity that I, that I thought about after my work in, in Florida. And now that it's here, it's like, wow, it's actually here and I'm actually doing this work for my community. Yes. And it's really awesome. So thank you all. And that's the kind of experience we all want to share and we want all of you to have. So if you just want to get your feet wet, awesome. We have low barrier, easy access, easy as you go kind of engagement. And if you're ready to jump in, you don't really care how, what the temperature of the water is, we definitely will love to push you into that deep end because it is a deep end and we need as many people swimming in that deep end as possible. So we, so we, can, we can unseat this administration. So I wanna ask you all now to see, you know, before coming to CP's workshop, you had an idea of how to act. And now that you have listened to us throughout this whole workshop, now I hope that that idea is now attached to an action item. So I wanna ask all of you now and into this breakout session is what is your first step? What is that one tiny first step that you're gonna do? Are you gonna sign up for a newsletter? Great. Are you just gonna contact us directly and say, give me my list right now, I'm ready to call? Fabulous. So I just want to see that way we can we can gauge it. We can see how we can meet you where you're at, meet you where you're ready. David, we're ready for our breakout. Ready, let's do it. Oh, did we lose them? <laughs> I don't know. Okay, just David, a second. I'm gonna, mute, I'm gonna move a couple people because our, our our rooms get a little mixed up here. So just a okay, you're fine. Thank you. I'm, I'm like, I know how to drive the car, but I don't know how to like necessarily take the corner at, at 50 miles an hour. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Is 
Let's see here. Oh yeah, okay, hang on. Okay, here we go. Almost done. They're in breakout rooms right now. Things going okay up there? <laughs> yep. Your goofball son has not had breakfast yet. So I'm getting him a sandwich and he's emptying your dishwasher. Oh, Great. A breakfast sandwich. <clears throat>
Not sure what's happening now. I'm showing that Das is talking, but we can't hear him. Wow. <laughs> okay. I, I saw that. That wasn't no. absolutely right. It's it's a Zoom mistake many make. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I'm going through the simple steps of uh, of starting some advocacy, you know, like probably emails and that kind of stuff, and um, that that will fit me and. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I'm going to start pretty soon here. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everybody. I know our group kind of, uh, someone got caught off, so I do apologize for that. Um, so really a diverse and a mix um, set of, you know, sentiments of, you know, I want to do a little bit more research because if I want to commit, I want to commit to I'm ready to go. Um, and we will meet you at any of those points, really. The, the main thing is act. That is one of our principles is act. <coughs> Democracy is a verb, so let's act. So mm -hmm. however much time you need to continue to vet us, mm -hmm. to coordinate schedules with other uh, friends and family mm -hmm. that you wanna get involved mm -hmm. in this as well, absolutely. When you're ready, sign up, and we are ready to receive you, and we are ready to go when you are. David? Sure. Thank you all so much. Um, I'd love to hear just a statement or two of, of somebody's commitment to action. So let's see um, if you have a uh, birthday in the um, in uh, the second half of November, November fifteenth to November thirtieth. All right, the Thanksgiving window. All right, then I'd love we'd love to hear you just share very briefly what your commitment is. Cause again, we're about action. That's about what we're about. So who, who falls in that cluster? Uh, I do. It's Michael. All right, Michael. Uh, yeah, November 19th. Um, and so, uh, you know, it's all we've got now. I am committed to, can people hear me? Yes. Yep. We yep. sure can. Yep. I am committed uh, starting now to get on the advocacy bandwagon, particularly around absentee ballots and ma early mail-in and early voting. That's a very straightforward. And then committed to do some homework on which of the states that I would like to actively engage in. And, and then from there, you know, within the next basically two, two or three days, uh, join a team. Awesome. Who else in there? Who else is in there? I'm not, but can I can I say my <laughs> commitment to action? <laughs> um, so I actually I really wanted to um, for me the states that speak out to me are Texas and Florida. Um, I have a best friend in San Antonio um, who I know is very fired up on this stuff too. So I want to connect with her. Um, I saw Move Texas. I briefly took a look and it looks like they might be headquartered in San Antonio. So I'm excited to start there. Um, I also wanted to try to connect with MJ if you're still on. Um, I am a native Spanish speaker and I would love to uh, be involved with what you're doing. Um, wow. And I would love to connect yeah. with you and get some guidance there. Because... Uh, sí, 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 bienvenida. Cuando quieras. Muy bien, entonces podemos hablar entonces muy pronto. No sé cómo... Um, um, I don't want to leave people out, but yes, I would no, like to... You can, you can um, send me an email to mj at cpnow.org. Okay. Great. mj at cpnow.org. This is how it works, everybody. This is how it works. We just connect and start the work. I love it. Gracias. Muchas gracias. And MJ, I'm going to follow up on that too, because you and I spoke a few Martha, weeks ago. Martha, yes. So we'll yes, be definitely and email will be coming out soon. I promise. Great. We'll be definitely connecting. Looking forward to that. Yes. 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 Wait. Can I? Can I jump in here? Did anybody on the staff have Andrea in your group? In your breakout group? I wish no? I did. <laughs> okay. Okay. Because I think we may have. There's a Andrea may uh, may fall in a, 
a different generational category than other <laughs> folks on here. And I think that uh, this is a good moment to to highlight. And I, I don't know if Wally's still on. He's but, not. He uh, had to head out. I need to jump off for a 10 o'clock, yeah. But um, Andrea, we're actually launching a CP Next intro workshop. So um, I will let you know when the next one is. So you can join. Yeah. Me. Can you send her a message? Course, You've got, yeah. And this is an FYI for other folks. If you're connected to to folks that, that fall into kind of the the millennial Gen X um, generation. Um, we do have a, another community that is uh, that allows them to kind of grow at their own speed. You know, you all reach us here and you're ready to go. You're ready to go. And um, some young folks need to be convinced on, you know, why, <laughs> why they should be and they, and they need a little bit more of an on-ramp, which is fine. You know, this is about meeting people where they are. So cpnxt.org is where you should send those people. And, um, you know, Andrew's going to come in there and she's going to meet a bunch of folks that are like-minded and, you know, similarly situated in their, in their lives at their life stage. Um, and then you will see her again. You'll see her again. Cause she, she's on fire already. She's ready to go. <laughs> I am. <laughs> so what we'd love to do is two things to close here. Um, and this is the first time we've done an intro workshop on zoom. So I think you, I, I'm open all the volunteers can sense how much, how happy we are, the leadership team, because we're like, oh my God, it's community again. We're able to, we're able to connect with you all again. Um, so this one's totally made up, but uh, I'd love you all to take two minutes right now and just finish this sentence in the chat so that everybody can see each other's chat, okay? And, and it, it's just one sentence. I want to be part, don't, you don't have to write the part I'm about to say, just finish it. I want to be part, of this work because so after the because and then you get to see what you wrote but everybody else so let's just take two three minutes and see that from everybody mm. This is awesome. I'm realizing that we're recording this. And so I don't know if you can see chat in, in recording. So can each staff member pick one of these? And just read it? Yeah, MJ, you wanna go first? Yeah, sure. Uh, Marta says, non-English speakers need the same access as everyone. Yes. Very cool. Love it. Gracias, Marta. Maria? Maria? Um, let's see. Um, I'm trying to like I was I was really far up in the scrolling. Um, <laughs> um, it is strategic. It is actionable and inclusive. Thanks, Michael. Awesome, Daniel. Uh, Shelby says giving back and civic engagement is a lifestyle. Ooh, very good. That's what we talked about in our breakout, Larcy. Uh, Carolyn says, because we have a precious democracy that depends on all of us being a part of it and supporting it. Yes. Very cool. David, you see one? Yep, sure do. Helen says, I want to help build equality and inclusiveness in voting in order to bring equality to those in power. I love it. Bert? Uh, uh, Marty says, it's easy and comfortable to put my feet where my heart is. Mm. Whoa. Wow. Thanks, Marty. And uh, Reva says, it is most important to be active in politics, not be silent, and be any part of change that you can be. Mm. Very cool. Right. That, that is really cool. This is great. This is great. So the second thing to close then is um, 
we have a tradition at Common Purpose. We have, we're only been around for a little while, but we have like lots of little traditions, you know, and little phrases, like you've heard some of them, their boots, our ground. No, wait, our, <laughs> our boots, their ground. Um, uh, democracy is a verb. Um, and uh, various little phrases that we have. And one of the traditions we have is that when we're done doing workshops in person or any activity in person. We will, um, whoever's still in the room, we will gather together in a circle. And sometimes we do this at the beginning of events too, so that we get everybody. But everybody will be in a circle and we put our hands in the middle and we put our hands in. So I'm gonna actually go off of my screen share so you can see the photo of this. Um, this is a picture of us on our trip to Virginia last year. Uh, we do civic tours. Um, where we learn educational pieces. And, you know, we were in Virginia last year, about a year ago, so March, right? And on this call, I know Maria and Charles were there. Um, and we spent uh, two hours with some local leaders going down Monument Avenue. And Monument Avenue is where the Confederate statues have been forever since they were put up in the 1910s and 20s. And they are huge and they are part of Richmond's history. But Richmond is changing and Virginia is changing and we've helped Virginia to change. It's been a state of focus for us. And so those monuments are all coming down right now. They are coming down in the last two weeks, all right? Mm -hmm. So that, that trip right there um, was part of us learning and one of the things that I don't think we've mentioned yet is that when we show up places and adopt the work of others, we also give them an adrenaline. We give them energy. We give them a sense of a commitment that somebody across the country cares to support them. It isn't why we do this, but we have found that to be so as well. So anyways, we put our hands in the middle and we, go, we push down on one word and we go up on another word and we change those words around and what those are. Sometimes it's common, down on common, up on purpose. This time, how about we're gonna go down on justice and we're gonna come up on democracy, okay? So everybody, I'm gonna come back on the screen now and we can all put our hands out towards the screen. And I know it's a little hokey, uh, <laughs> but out and uh, we're gonna go down on justice and up on democracy, okay? So I'm gonna say one, two, three, and then- and again, Unmute everybody, yeah, unmute everybody for this. Yeah, everybody unmutes, everybody unmutes. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, all right, so down on justice, I'm gonna go one, two, three, and then we go down, because this always gets messed up. One, two, three, and then down, okay? And then up on democracy, so here we go. One, two, three. Justice. Justice. Democracy. 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 Very good. A, a, uh, a tradition is born. Bye, <laughs> we'll everybody. See you, all soon. see you soon. Let's go Thank to work. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, David. Thank, Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Thank you so Thank much. We really appreciate everyone's time. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. See you soon. Hey, the uh, the chat box gets uh comes out as a text at the end if you want it, Charles. Oh yeah, oh, we want cool. that. We want that. Thanks, Sylvia. Yes. <laughs> yeah, Thanks. Sylvia. It was great to have you, you. Sylvia. <laughs> Thanks, Sylvia. I work on Iowa. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and and good to see your face. I tried to message it to you really quickly when I saw you in here, but good to see your face. I got it. Email. Thanks for your email. I got it yesterday. Thank you. All righty. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna close this up, folks. Okay. Yes. We'll see you later. Okay. Bye. Wait, 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 wait. This format is way better. Yeah. yeah is so much better that was way better so this is again like we um we took our physical thing and we just tried to like replicate it digitally and that's fine that's like that's why we're able to like shift so quickly into digital now it's like what is the the thing with like digital in mind first and that's what this is yeah 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 because it was it felt like every other interaction that we're having now all the new stuff we're spinning up 
runs like this where we utilize the website and it's not like some slide where we get where we recreate what's on the website and that's why like the most up-to-date thing is there it, they get to see the, exactly the place where they're going to interact with when they do the work um and then we've got this like more organic free, free flowing right that feels more like a how we were at a workshop you know yeah i think we can do this in those hours, those hour, those Monday hour sessions, mm -hmm. because we, we, like I cut my state stuff a lot shorter than it had been. Cause we're like, Hey, you, you can go check this out on the website. Right. Yeah. Uh, so I think that the community bit is probably the glue. Right. Yeah. So yeah. Right. Yep. So super important. So yeah. like there, like there's no question. The vibe here was awesome. Right. Mm -hmm. And, uh, um, and did you all go into the same groups with the same people that, each time? No, different. Really? I got the same exact people. Oh, really? That's random. Is it just, that's just how it happened, huh? Yeah, Zoom is not great on the breakout rooms. Like, there were eight people that mm. had fallen out of rooms that had didn't show up later. They just, oh. were, I had to reassign them again. Oh, and wow. It's, th this is what I was, why I was taken an extra second there because it just it every time i've done breakout rooms it does not work seamlessly it takes a little bit of thing it's but it's still great but it's just glitchy yeah. it's not yeah. just as easy as hitting a button okay that's good to okay. know good to know yeah definitely um yeah i don't know i don't know how we get it down to an hour we can talk about that i think you know if we just say people like go shorter on everything that's tough to do we actually have to cut some stuff i don't know i mean we've got time to talk about that but like why yeah. we're here i think it's important to hear from people totally it's going to be much smaller groups too it's probably going to be more like 10 people okay i don't know dude <laughs> <laughs> i don't know man the way people are getting fired up about this like think how many people would we have on this 40 something 50 maybe a peak it was 44 at peak Wow. Yeah, the one we had before this was like 20 something people. Mm. Yeah. So it's just things are picking up. Yeah. Well, I still think we can do why we're here in yeah. a quick breakout. We can do the circles. Whoever's doing the circles can just kind of like hit them. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And then the states, like, hey, here's the, the, the states and here's the information on it, right? Here's mm -hmm. how you get started with the work. And then another breakout again to close it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's good when people go get back together. It's it's really cool to see the evolution of thought. Yeah. Like the, at the beginning, they're like, yeah, I don't know, and I'm thinking this. And at the end, they're like, yeah, let's go. Um, yeah. Okay, we'll figure it out. Yep. Yeah. All right, good work. Great job. Great job. Yep. We'll have a good day, okay? Yes. Yeah, take care, man. See ya. All right. Bye. Bye.